Welcome to a new series where I want to go through and just try to digest down some of the aspects of brushless motor theory. So hopefully that with just a more general understanding of theory behind the motors, you can have a better sense of what to look for when testing things in bench tests and what aspects are important when we're trying to make a motor choice. Bear in mind that brushless motors have been around for a long time. There's no like mystery or super black art about this. It's a very well understood thing in industry. So we'll start out with a real softball, KV. Now right off the bat, a lot of people may think that KV stands for like kilovolts or has something to do with voltage, but that's completely wrong. The K actually means that this is a constant value and the V stands for velocity, the velocity constant for the motor. There are multiple constants that relate to a brushless motor. The velocity constant, there's a torque constant, and there's a motor constant which talks about torque efficiency. And we'll touch on some of those a little later. What many people understand KV to be is when you apply a certain voltage to the motor how quickly it spins, but actually it's a measure of the back EMF generated when the motor is turning a certain speed. So if we use the motor as a generator, and instead of applying power and getting it to spin, we spin the motor directly, that creates a voltage on the uh, motor windings, and we can read that voltage with a meter. If we spin the motor 2300 RPM, and we get one volt reading off the thing, that is what gives us a 2300 kV motor. And that stands at any RPM. If, you, if we spin this uh, 2300 kV motor at 4600 RPM, we'll get two volts read off the windings. Now what actually gets us the kV? Here we're looking at a top section of the motor stator. And the kV is related to the number of turns that are wound around each tooth in the motor. As we increase the number of turns, we decrease the kV. So this over here with a few very large turns is a high kV motor. And as we have a lot of smaller turns, this is a low kV motor. Decreasing the kV manages to increase the torque constant of the motor, and if you look at just the torque constant, you might think that the lower kV motor makes more torque. But as you increase the number of windings, you also increase the resistive losses in the windings. So the torque constant goes up, but the amount of current going through goes down, and torque is related directly to current. So the total torque actually ends up staying the same. You can look at it in terms of the number of amp turns uh, rather than just the number of turns full stop. So if we have three turns and we're feeding this motor with one amp of current, that's equal to three amp turns. If we double the number of turns and have six turns, we've also doubled the resistance, so we're only getting a half amp of current put through the windings. But since we have twice as many windings, the amp turns ends up being the same regardless of what uh, kV we have. And that relates back to the motor constant. The torque constant may increase, but the motor constant is more of a measure of the torque efficiency of the motor. And this here shows that even as you decrease the kV, you're not actually changing that motor constant because the total torque produced remains the same. The torque constant increases, but the amount of current to make that torque decreases. So what actually does affect the motor constant, the torque efficiency of the motor. Well, the radius of the uh, the motor bell does, and it relates to the flux density inside the air gap. We can increase the flux density by either making the air gap smaller, a tighter air gap uh, will increase the torque efficiency. We can also use larger or more powerful magnets that will increase the, the flux density. And the third thing that kind of relates back to KV is the volume of copper that's in the windings themselves. So if you look at these two examples, the high KV motor and the low KV motor, even though it has half as many windings, the wire is much thicker. And so the amount of copper inside the windings is actually the same. But if we took this and wound this low KV motor as a high KV motor with the same size wire, you see what we've reduced is our slot fill percentage. And where we have a lot less copper here than we do uh, if we try and pack that slot as full as possible. So this increases our resistive losses and decreases the uh, torque efficiency that we can get out of the motor. So in this case, we're not losing torque efficiency because the KV has increased. We're losing it because a cross-sectional area of copper has decreased compared to that. And if we increase the size of the wire and pack as much copper in that slot as we can, then we can increase our torque efficiency no matter what KV we have. 